Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying a Dappin' Daddy. Now, I'm tying these for a friend, this is my pattern to copy. Um, and by all accounts this is one of his most productive patterns. I don't really know a great deal about Dappin' to be honest, but I'm just going to be what he's telling me. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel, get access to the online tie fly tying classes, members only content as well as entering into the giveaways for the flies tied in the channel. Alternatively, you can subscribe, hit the bell button, like the video, share the video, watch it all the way to the end. All that helps the channel to grow. So, I'm going to make the detached body first. Um, so I've just put a pin, it's actually my leg, one of my leg pullers. Um, so it's a wee fine needle. And I've started some 6 uni and tan. I've got to get a good bunch of natural row deer. And snip myself a good wee section. Now you can make the, the you can make this fairly dense, it's fairly thick, because it will compress slightly as you tie it. Um, now, obviously, if you're going to tie these, you've got to do all the bodies, and then do the rest of the fly. Right, it's much easier than switching back each time. Um, but for the purposes of video, I'll just go straight through. So. I'm just got to catch that on, and don't worry about this end being a bit messy. That's fine. You can you tidy it up with the scissors later. Now, if there's any that are a wee bit short, having made it all the way, you can just take them out. I'm going to take a good few wraps there, and then I want looking at my sample here. About a 15 mil body. And there's got to be three segments, so I'm going to put five on the pin. Uh, sorry, six segments. So I'm going to put five on the pin. Um, and the segments will be roughly three mil. So I'll just drag all my hair out of the way, skip the thread forward, a couple of wraps, and then push it all down again. You can, as a lot of people like to do, just. Um, Sort of run a, a set of X wraps down. I just like this body a wee bit better, and it's what again what was on the original. There's one, just sweep it back, work your thread through, try to keep them quite even. Two or three turns is enough. I know some people like to use foam. Um, actually, another fly I've got to tell you, he does like foam. But when the daddy he prefers the, the deer hair for some reason. It's a bit more time consuming. But I don't know if, I mean, I think it lasts just as long as the foam. You know, the deer hair is not the toughest the material, but neither is the foam. So I'm just coming down. I'm going to a couple of extra wraps there. And then the last segment that I'm going to tie on the pin is here. That looks quite good there. A few extra wraps and then whip finish. Put that nice and tight. And trim my tag in long, we will sell a good few centimetres. What I like to do then, before I slide it off, and while everything's supported, we'll just come in 
and I'll run a bit of varnish, especially on this end piece, the thread. And then a wee quick run, very a very light amount. I mean, a, a tiny amount here, just just on the thread wraps. I don't really want it on the deer here. And it's it's much easier to do it now. And then again, a good bit there where I've finished. But it's much easier to do it when the the everything's being supported by the needle. Then you just push it off and then you can take the tag end for your tie in that's the whip finish here just give that a wee tighten you'll feel it tightening up and then it will stop wanting to move and that's it locked in and then the back end here again before I get onto the fi final flies I've got to tidy that up You know, a slightly flared end, which is like a real daddy. Like they've got a kind of wee flare at the back of their abdomen. So there's the body. As I said, do yourself half a dozen or whatever before you go and tie the rest of the fly. But I'll just skip straight ahead, and I'll put my hook my vice. This is a size ten. It's a Tiemco 200R. I'm not sure if it was a Tiemco that the sample fly was on, but it's it might have been a fill and mill larva hook, but they're almost identical. Um, I mean, they might be exactly the same. It's very difficult to tell them apart. So, and this is a size 10, right? So it's a long shank, kind of medium wire, no too light, no too heavy, ideal for the dapping. And I'm just using the same thread and I'm going to come back to about the hook point. And I'm getting a good base of thread down here because I don't want things rolling or anything when I tie this uh, detached body in. And what I'm going to do, as I said, I want that, there's six, there were six segments in the original. So there'll be six on mine. And I'm going to offer that in. Part of my thread, so I've just got a wee base there. I offer that and I make my final segment with the deer hair around the shank of the hook. And I'm catching in the thread tags as well. And I'm going to get that right nice and tight. This is see you could use 80 thread, but the 60 gives you that wee bit extra uh, strength. You can you can really tighten up on it. And I'll come in, trim away. Or the waist. I want everything that's got to be inside where all the hackling is, don't want any loose bits of fibre. And then tidy up. And just you don't need to be fussy, everything's got to be very easily hidden for you, right, with the the um the hackle and all that. So, for legs, it's knotted pheasant tail, and I'm going to put on 10. Right, that was 10. It wants 10 legs. Obviously, the real insect doesn't have 10 legs. But, these are big flies, you're fishing them in a big wave. You want plenty of straggly fibre, so the legs are visible. And if you lose a couple to fish, you've still got plenty there. So I've got my 10, split them in the middle, try that again, and I'll come in underneath, and I want these legs trailing, say the tips of the legs are about half again the length of the, bo the body area, if they're a bit longer that's fine, just whatever you like really, again tidy that up, take away the waist, Just three curly tag ends there, and I'll just cover everything up. Now, uh, the next thing is a hackle. I'm going to use a kind of gingery bird ginger hackle here, 
and I'm going to put some hackle on before I add the wings. I'm going to tie it in like wet fly style, right? I want the feather curving back. Snap away the waist. I'm going to put about a quarter of the hackle or so on here. And I want to pack the wraps in though, right? Really tight one wrap directly in front of the previous. Maybe that's about good there. I'll cross my thread, make sure that's nice and tight there. Fold that back a bit, don't die over it. Trim away. Now for the wings, I'm just using my Chinese, that's a red gamey Chinese neck. Dark ginger, something like that. I'm going to take one from each side so they kind of curve with each other so that they match up. Feather. Just got another one from about the same bit. That's better. And then just going to offer these in so that the they're coming about the back of the body. Pinch and loop a couple of times and just tighten up. See how things are sitting. That looks not bad. So just tidy everything up all the way back to the hackle. And you don't need to worry too much about um, how these are going to fit. You see my thread slipping there? So I'm going to back it off. Don't don't want any loose wraps. And I'll build up a wee, I've just got too much of a ramp on my base there. So, if I just thicken this up a wee bit, it'll mean that the, the wings will sit exactly how I want them. So, just get ready, get them ready again. And that's the thing, that if you're not happy, or something's not gone right, just stop and go back, don't just try to keep forcing it in. Same, measure them up, about a body length, pinch and loop them in, if you're happy, which I am, you can tighten up on them, and they'll, they'll sit just nice, um, although you've got all that hackle there, the The um, the stalks of this will sort of lie in between the barbs of the the palmered hackle. Again, just tidy up, and we'll just make this into a nice smooth taper. Take my hackle again. I'm just going to finish the fly with the hackle, so we'll just get that tied in. Bring it through to the front and then get these. Can I go back first just to make sure I'm really tight up against it? I'm just going to fill in the whole front of the fly with a hackle. I mean, this hackle's actually. It's a, Although it's a saddle, it seems to be tapering away quite a bit, so we'll just tie it off and change feathers. I don't want it short like that. Again, I'd rather take the minute to change rather than 
sort of make and do with something that I don't, I don't like. Get that in. Trim that away, although it's a big bushy fly, you still want that to be tidy when you go to tie it in. And then I'll just keep coming forward. get to the front, cross your thread, it's two or three wraps, uh, two or three, tie that off, I've got a couple of wee fibres there that we'll just take away. It's nice and close. Take the thread away. Now, essentially, the fly is tied. I'm going to varnish the head, but there's something that I do to it that I'm doing to them all. Right, so, varnish that. And then, we've got the last one I tied. Set this aside to dry. Got it here. Right. I like to use for these, I'm treating them off for them with water shed, the permanent waterproofer. This is not a floatant that you put on when you're fishing, you get it on at the vise. I'm going to put three drops there. Right. And then just rub it in and it will kind of foam up and it will take a lather. But what this is is a permanent waterproofer. Right. And your fly gets kind of wet soapy looking after the varnish is dry, they're up, once they're all dry, tied and dried up do that and they'll float forever right, um, they wash clean really easily and uh, you know, you, you put your floating on and they're going to float all day you catch a fish the slime washes off dead easy and a quick flick and the fly is dry and you can treat it again. It's excellent stuff. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below and I'll see you for another video. Take lines guys. Bye.